Voice flow and Flowwise are probably two of the most popular solutions when it comes to building AI chatbots in 2024. In today's video, I'm going to be making the comparison between Voice flow and Flowwise, and by the end of this video, you're going to be able to know which exact tool you should use for which scenario in your AI automation agency. So whether you already have experience building out AI chatbots or whether you're totally new to this entire thing, this video is going to give you a lot of clarity in terms of the options out there. I have personally built over 70 chatbots for our clients over the past nine months, and I'm going to be laying over some of that experience to you guys. First things first, let's take a look at VoiceFlow and Flowwise so that you guys have an understanding of what each platform is capable of. VoiceFlow is an easy to use drag and drop interface platform where you can build out a ton of logic when it comes to your AI chatbots. You can implement custom code, you can build out logic, and I think really anybody can build things on VoiceFlow flow even if you're a total beginner flowwise on the other hand gives you a lot more control over what you're actually doing and is laid out in a way where you can build lang chain agents compared to voice flow there's less logic that you can integrate into one of your agents so you're not actually building out a chatbot flow instead you're building an intelligent ai agent flowwise allows you to add custom tools which your agent can use at any given time by using its inherent intelligence. And if you have a little bit of knowledge about JavaScript, you can build out really anything inside of Flowwise and make a ton of complex tools to make your agents really powerful and intelligent. So before we go over the pricing, what kind of projects I would build on which platform, let's actually do a dive into both VoiceFlow and Flowwise so that you guys can see what it feels like to use each of these tools. Once you sign up to VoiceFlow, this is going to be the interface that you're going to see. And if you go ahead and click on new agent, you will be able to actually create a test agent right here, select the chat modality, select the language, and then simply click on continue. This is the interface that you actually see where you're gonna be building out your AI chatbots. While I walk through VoiceFlow, it should become very clear why I think that this is a great platform for beginners. As you can see, once I open up a new project, I get this default layout from VoiceFlow itself where you can see the very simple nodes. So basically you start your conversation, then you have different AI prompting uh, models. The purpose of this video is really not to actually walk through how to build things in VoiceFlow. I have a ton of other videos on that as well, but to give you an idea, you're able to implement buttons. And when you actually run a conversation here by clicking on start and testing it, you will be able to see what it looks like in the chat interface. So as you can see, it said hello in a different language. And then it said this message right here and gave me the buttons based on which button I click, it will redirect me to a different point in the conversation. Something else which is noteworthy about voice flow is the fact that they have a knowledge base feature included. So if you go ahead and click on knowledge inside of your project, you are able to add data sources where you can upload URLs, sitemaps, upload files such as text, docx, etc., or just add plain text. They even have a Zendesk integration. So if you're working with someone who has a Zendesk help center article, you can integrate their help center directly by using this integration. So all in all, VoiceFlow makes it very, very easy for you to start building chatbots. It has a very logical drag and drop interface, and you can build out chatbots very quickly and start to get the hang of it very fast. As I said, I have a ton of videos on this channel. I'm going to put some of them in the description if you want to start learning how to build chatbots on VoiceFlow. The fact that they also have a knowledge base included right here, and they make it very easy to understand as well as some analytics and easy integration it just makes voice flow a very, very suitable beginner option. Flowwise, on the other hand, is where it gets a little bit more complicated in terms of actually getting it set up once. But once you do know how to use Flowwise, the possibilities of what you can build are endless because you have so much more control over the individual building blocks of your AI agent. So if you actually go ahead and look for Flowwise GitHub on Google, you will go ahead and find the Flowwise AI GitHub repository. If you go ahead and click on this and you are actually able to deploy Flowwise to your own server completely free of charge. I've made a video on how exactly to do this and I'm going to link it somewhere here up on the screen so that you can go ahead and set up your Flowwise within 10 minutes or less. Once you've actually set up Flowwise, this is the interface that you're going to be running into. As you can see on the left hand side, we have a ton of different things, including agent flows, which is in beta. So I'm going to be making a video on that very soon. So make sure to subscribe and leave a like on the video if you want to see that. 
a marketplaces, tools, assistance. You can save your different credentials in here and you even have a document store. Now, if you go ahead and open up a project, obviously at the beginning, it's gonna be a completely blank canvas. I'm just gonna quickly show you guys what you can do here. And as you can see, there's a lot, a lot of possibilities of what can be built with Flowwise. This project on screen is actually a customer support agent, which I built out in one of my previous tutorial videos where I actually also provided the entire template. So if you wanna find that, go ahead and click somewhere on the screen to find the video and join our school community at school.com slash omnifusion to be able to access the template and all of our other resources that we have available for completely free. So as you can see, compared to voice flow, there is less of a logical interface where you build out the conversation path. Instead, what we have right here is this tool agent is actually controlling the entire conversation with one system prompt. Now this system prompt is far from perfect. This was made in a tutorial, so I literally took about five minutes to write this out. But this one system prompt is actually gonna control the entire conversation and allow the agent to understand what it is supposed to do. On top of that, you hook up your agent to memory, to a chat open AI model. So this is gonna be the tool calling chat model, uh, which allows the agent to speak and decide when to use custom tools. And then you have the tools node where you can add in a ton of cool stuff. In this case, I've added in a retriever tool. So compared to voice flow, where you have a built-in knowledge feature and you simply upload all the documents right here, in Flowwise, you need to take it into your own hands. And in this case, we use Quadrant for our ve vector database. Again, I've showed that in the setup video from A to Z, I've showed exactly how you can set up Quadrant so that you are able to actually use a uh, knowledge base right here. You then have all of these different things. All of that explained in a different video, including the recursive character text splitter, the file, the embeddings, all of that. Once you actually get a hang of it, this does give you a lot of a lot more control over your projects, as you guys can probably imagine. Now, switching to a different project, I actually also built this project that we're looking at right here for an other video that I uploaded on this channel. So as you can see, we post a ton of valuable videos, like and subscribe. Um, and as you can see right here, we actually ended up building a custom tool, which will give you guys a little bit of an idea of what is possible with custom tools. And in this custom tool, we actually update a CRM. So during the conversation, the AI collects a ton of information based on the system prompt and is able to actually save that into the CRM by saving, for example, the name, email, monthly revenue, their biggest struggle, the size of their team. And we have JavaScript functions and JavaScript code running as well in order to make this possible hooked up to Zapier on the back end so that we can save all this information into a CRM. And this is literally just the beginning of what is possible. We can retrieve information. So let's say we have an e-commerce customer support chatbot. We're able to retrieve information um, on order numbers, for example, using these custom tools. All of this is obviously also possible inside of voice flow where you can use the API node. So inside of the dev, you have you have JavaScript, you have API, but it's just laid out in a little bit of a different way where you actually need to build out the entire logic behind it. Whereas with Flowwise, the agent is actually able to autonomously decide when it's going to use a tool and what it's gonna use the tool for. Now that you guys have a good understanding of VoiceFlow and Flowwise, the capabilities of the two different platforms, let me just quickly speak on it before we jump into pricing and I will make an official recommendation on what I think you should use. We personally started out building with VoiceFlow back in the day, our first 10 to 20 chatbots were all built on VoiceFlow. I think VoiceFlow is great. It's beginner friendly. It's easy to use. You can get a hang of it quickly. And I love the way that you can easily integrate VoiceFlow into your website. You can connect VoiceFlow with ManyChat to integrate into social media platforms. And I still use VoiceFlow for a ton of projects that we are building internally, not just for the ease of use, but also for the customizable options when it comes to building out the logic and the branches of a, of a potential conversation. Flowwise, on the other hand, I love because it's an intelligent AI agent, which is capable of deciding when to use tools. So compared to voice flow, where you ask a question, you capture the response, you then trigger a tool, and you have to build it out in that way. With Flowwise, an AI agent is actually able to autonomously decide 
in an intelligent way when it's going to use a tool and when it's not going to use a tool. It's able to follow through an entire conversation using just one prompt, whereas with VoiceFlow, you need to keep reiterating and you need to build out all these different conversational branches in order to actually have an ongoing conversation with an AI agent. What's important to note is that when we integrate a FlowWise agent into, for example, Instagram or, or WhatsApp, or even when we put it onto a website, we personally still prefer to simply use voice flow as the front end, use voice flow, put flow wise into voice flow. So inside of voice flow, we'll simply trigger an API call to flow wise, and then we'll actually display the voice flow widget on our website. We'll integrate voice flow with many chat to put it into Instagram DMs, Facebook messenger, WhatsApp, and more. But the back end, the intelligent part of the AI agent is actually built out in flow wise. And the recent video I made on integrating flow wise with Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp actually showcases that exact approach where we take the flow wise agent, we put it into voice flow, and then we hook up voice flow with, with whatever we want to hook it up with. Now, finally, let's cover pricing. This is probably one of the key factors for a lot of you guys as well. When it comes to voice flow, you can actually get started for free in the sandbox. You have a single editor, you have one workspace, you have 50 knowledge base sources per agent. You can build two agents and you have 100,000 monthly AI tokens. So using the sandbox, I would recommend anybody to do that. And then upgrading to the pro where you can have $50 per editor per month. So if it's just you, it's $50 a month, which is very, very affordable. You get up to 2 million AI tokens included. And I feel like this is a very good starting point for a lot of people trying to get into the space. And obviously, as you scale, you may want to start using the team plan or more. Now, Floa is on the other side, as I said, is open source. So if you go ahead and watch the video where I walk you through the setup, you will know that you only really need to pay for hosting. Hosting is going to cost you starting at around six to eight bucks a month. If you want to get more powerful hosting, it's going to be maybe 10 to $20 a month, but it doesn't really go beyond that for the hosting. That's going to include hosting the flow wise. Um, however, there's important things to notice such as quadrant also has a cost involved. So once you have multiple quadrant, which is the knowledge base. So with voice flow, you obviously have knowledge base included. You can have up to 200 knowledge base sources per agent for $50 a month. With FlowWise, you actually need to pay for every single cluster that you're going to be hosting in Quadrant, which is going to cost you about $24 a month per knowledge base, which you want to have for an agent. So if multiple agents use the same knowledge base, it's just going to cost you one time the 24 bucks a month. However, if you want to have multiple knowledge bases for multiple agents, you're going to have to pay for every single one of those. So that is something to keep in mind um, that this additional control does come with an additional cost. Something else to keep in mind as well for flow wise is that you do need to pay for your own AI tokens. So you will need to hook up your OpenAI API account and you will actually need to pay the costs for the tokens that you're using, which makes a lot of sense. Um, it is cheaper per token compared to VoiceFlow because VoiceFlow obviously upsells or does a, put some markup on the tokens which they purchase from OpenAI. So you have more control over it, but that's something to keep in mind as well. With these $50 a month, you actually get up to 2 million monthly AI tokens. And with FlowWise, you need to pay from the very first token all by yourself. That is it for this video. I hope I could give you guys some clarity on what is better voice flow versus flow wise. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more and join our free school community at school.com slash Omnifusion for more videos and resources. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.